Bring thoughts of the enemy. Oh, you got to pray. Come on and praise him. Glorify the Lord today. We want to give him glory because he's holy, holy, holy. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him higher. Let's lift him above all things. Oh, God, we confess to you that we are all that we want to be. But we want to be what you've called us to be. So we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. We acknowledge your mighty works. We acknowledge the breath of life. We in our right minds we acknowledge the use of our limbs we thank you lord oh give him glory give him glory praise the lord praise the lord praise god in the sanctuary oh come on come on come on praise him in his mighty firmament Hey, praise him for his mighty works, his mighty acts. Oh, give him glory. Praise him according to his excellent greatness, his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Come on, musicians. Hey, praise him with the lute and the harp. Lift up a sound. Lift up a sound. Praise him with the timbre and the dance. Yeah. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Oh, there is a sound. There is a sound of praise. Praise him with loud cymbals. Come on, Jay. Hey. hey, hey, hey. Praise him with clashing symbols let everything let everything let everything that's me and you let everything that has for us praise the lord praise you better praise the lord hallelujah and he didn't have to let you be here but I'm glad to be in the service just one more time can you clap your hands all over the sanctuary if you're watching at home and let's give God praise from the rising of the sun to the going down of that same sun the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah to have church this morning. Is that all right? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's have church. I want you to look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, come on, Kia, let's have church. Everybody clap your hands. Let me see you clap. If you're watching with us at home, put your hands together. Come on, everybody clap your hands. Church. Oh, let's have church. Here we go. Let's have 
Jesus, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. What is that? Come on, if you know his name is Jesus, the one who woke you up this morning, the one that started on your way, every time you call on the name of Jesus, he answers. Do I have a few witnesses out there that every time you called on the name of Jesus, he answers? So if every time you called on his name, he answered, you ought to stand on your feet and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because he answered you when you called every time in your weakness he answered you in your healing he answered you when you need to be delivered he answered you when you needed your mind covered he answered you when you had no way out he answered you when you were between a rock and a hard place he answered you when you didn't have all enough money to pay your bills he answered you I don't know about you but I'm excited today that the Lord answered my prayers I'm standing here today because the Lord answered some of my prayers he answered my mama prayers Prayers. He answered my grandmother prayers. He answered my great grandmother prayers. And because of them, I stand here today. Because of them, you stand here today. Because God is a great God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You still deserve the praise, the glory, and the honor because we can call on your name, that great name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's seal that praise. Put your hands together. Open up your mouth and tell the Lord he's wonderful. Tell the Lord he's awesome. Tell the Lord he's omnipotent. Whatever you need him to be, he's been that for you. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a mind regulator. He's a way maker. He's whatever you need him to be. And we are not coming to this place and not give our great God a great praise because he's worthy of all the glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy. After all I've been through, after all the years, 
everything that I've been through, you still keeping me. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you are worthy. God, you are worthy. In spite of all that we've been through, in spite of everything that we're going through right now, God is still worthy. You've been the same yesterday, tomorrow, and forevermore. And I don't have to worry about tomorrow because I, I have my trust in you. You lead me and you guide me every step of my way, even when I didn't want to do right. You still love me. I'm so thankful today that we have a God that loves us unconditionally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. And we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your sweet fragrance that's in this place. Lord God, we ask that you continue to dwell within us, not just today, but even after the service ends, that we have the residue of your presence all over our lives so that we can walk in authority that you called us to do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God say amen, amen. And amen. I would like to welcome you in this, in this place, in this branch of Zion. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us today. If you are a first-time guest um, and you're here in the sanctuary, if, could you, if you could please stand so we can celebrate you for coming and fellowshipping with us today. Any first-time or returning guests here today? Amen. Amen. Can we put our blessed hands together for our brother that's in the back? Thank you. Thank you for joining with us and worshiping with us today. For all of our online, um, online guests, if you are a visitor online, just put it in the comments. There will be somebody there to greet you and welcome you in our five-star way. How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord today? How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord today? I don't know what you went through this week, but you know that you need a word on this morning. I want you to keep in mind before we introduce our preacher for this morning, keep it in mind we have a few people that are um, in need of prayer this week. We have uh, Sister Elaine Knowles. So in your prayer time, in your time of preparation and time of devotion, we need you to lay before the Lord and lift up these names. We want to lift up Sister Elaine Knowles. Um, she's going through cancer treatment right now, so let's pray for her. And we want to lift up, lift up Deacon Larry Harling and the passing of his mother. Can we make sure that we are praying for our members? Can, we, can, I, can I ask you to commit to praying for our members 30 seconds out of the day? I'm not asking for a minute. I'm just asking for 30 seconds. You can pray right now in 30 seconds. Just lift up their names in prayer. Um, as we are lifting them up, we want to continue to celebrate everything that we have going on in the life of our church. You heard the, um, the, minute, the announcements this morning. We'll make sure that you hear again before the end of service. But we, we have a word from the Lord on high. Amen. Amen. Our pastor is not with us today, but we know he always leaves us in capable hands. And that is none other than Minister Yvonne Stepney, Associate Minister here at the Great Assembly Church. Can we celebrate her? You, she is no stranger. You've heard her preach before. You know of her gifting. You know of her anointing. What I want you to do while you're celebrating her, I want you to stretch your right hand towards her. And as you pray from your seats, I'm going to pray out loud. Most wise and heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the gift of Minister Yvonne Stephanie. Lord God, use her in a mighty way. Use her like you've never used her before. Let the Spirit of God fall fresh on her in Jesus' name. And the people of God say amen. 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 After the sermonic selection, the next, after the sermonic selection, the next voice you'll hear be none other than Minister Yvonne Stephanie. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We just sang and shouted and danced about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Something really does happen when we call the name of Jesus. Do you believe that? Do you believe that there is power? I don't, we don't just say it. I don't just say it. We don't just say it. Uh, just, you know, for, for, you know, because it sounds good or, you know, we use it as a cliche, but there really is power in the name of Jesus. And I just need to know, do I have one or two or three or four witnesses in the building? And if you're watching us at home that knows the power that this name possesses, this this name has power to, to set the captive free. This name has power to, 
to heal and to save and to deliver. Anytime I found myself in a rut, all I did was call on the name of Jesus. And he was the one who was right there to bring me out, to bring me through and to bring me over. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's even salvation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anytime I went through a situation, I just called the name of Jesus. When I thought I was lost, I just called on the name of Jesus. When I was broke, I called on the name of Jesus. When I was sick in my body and I really didn't know how I was going to get well, I called on the name of Jesus. For it is at that name that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Hallelujah unto heaven and earth that he is Lord. Can you just lift your hands in the presence of the almighty king and just thank him for who he is. Hallelujah. Whoever he has been to you, take a moment just to thank him. Thank you for being my savior and my provider, my healer, my way maker. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being the lover of my soul, the sustainer of my mind. Thank you, Jesus, because you were my way through in midst of darkness. Hallelujah. The song simply says, Jesus, there's something special, supernatural about your name, Jesus, something thank him for who he is we praise you we worship you lord let's sing this together everybody if you know it with sing it with us come on team let's sing together sing jesus jesus something happened something special supernatural about everybody sing in the presence of the Lord. Say something special. Something special. There is something special. There's something supernatural, supernatural. about his name. Oh, come on, call the name of Jesus. Something happened. Something happened. When I mention your name. Come on, everybody, let's sing it together. Say Jesus, Jesus, oh, something special, special, supernatural about your name, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Everybody 
Lord and say, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore I you. Worship and adore I you. just want to tell you that I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything, more than anything, more than life itself, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I worship and adore you. pass you by if you if you really really love the Lord come on let's just take a moment just to worship and adore him I, I really can't tell you what to say in this moment but all I can let you know is that if you surrender your will to the Lord if you if you lift your hands in his presence and, and allow the Holy Spirit to the Holy Spirit to minister to you then you'll find something to say to him it's like I love you Jesus I lift you, I adore you, because you mean everything to me. You mean everything to me. I know that you love your mother and your father, your sister, your brother, but there's nothing like the love of the Father. Hallelujah. We love him because he first loved us. He sent his son to die on the cross for us. He paid the oh, my, my, my. He paid the debt that that we owe. He paid the debt that he did not owe. And for that, I say I love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you thought I was worth saving. That's why I love you. That's why I serve you. That's why I worship you. To live. That's why I live to worship you hallelujah come on let's love on the father today we love you jesus we honor you lord we praise you we lift you up let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed of the lord say so if you've been redeemed by the hand of god you are the He who he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy ought to say so. I love you, Jesus, for keeping me. I love you, Jesus, for protecting me. I love you, Jesus, just because of who you are in my life. Just because of who you are. Just because of who you are. You are strong and mighty. Lift up your head, oh ye gates, oh, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Oh my God. He is the Lord strong and mighty, oh, uh, and he is the Lord God mighty in battle. Uh, so lift up your head, uh, lift up your head in the sanctuary. Uh, your heart in the sanctuary as the king of glory comes in as the king of kings comes in we love you jesus we love you lord we adore you we reverence you we acknowledge you as our king yes lord you are the prince of peace you are the lion of the tribe of judah hallelujah Anybody glad? Anybody happy this morning? Anybody happy that he loved you? Even in your jacked up, messed up self? Anybody happy that Jesus still loves us in spite of who we are? No matter what we've done, no matter how we've lived, no matter when we cursed out somebody,
but Jesus still loved us. He still loved you and I. So we, um, 
We definitely give, um, you, you definitely can sit down for a moment. We certainly give honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. And we give honor to our pastor, Dr. Reginald Thomas, and the first family in their absence. We certainly do not take it lightly that Pastor Thomas has me to stand here before you this morning to proclaim the gospel. And then I also thank you, my father's children, for all of you who showed up this morning. Amen. I'm thankful. I love my greater family. Y'all know I love y'all. To I love y'all, as they say, to the moon and back. But it's also good when you have your own family in the house. Amen. And I'm grateful that I have family in the house. This morning, you know, as always, my cousin Vonda and Brian are always here. Thank you, Lord. But I thank God for my cousin Antoine in the house, my auntie and uncle, brother and sister there. So I thank God for them being in here this morning. I thank God for my children being in here this morning. And y'all know I thank God for my 6'5". Y'all know. That right there, y'all, he is still the captain in my crunch. And he's still the frosting on my flakes. I said still. That means something. Anybody ready for a word? All right, we ready for a word? All righty. If you don't mind standing as we go to the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Now, if y'all give me some amens, I'll get y'all out of here by 3 o'clock. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great, a great earthquake. So the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands, chains, were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. You may take a seat. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, O oh God, to say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for your grace and your mercy. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, but God, since you did, we're going to give you glory, honor, and praise that you so rightly deserve. Lord, I pray right now that you move Yvonne out of the way and send in your Holy Ghost power, oh God. So God, I have studied, but I certainly do need your spirit. Move like never before, oh God. It is my prayer, oh God, that someone will come saying, what must I do to be saved? It is in your mighty and matchless name that we pray and we give God glory and say amen amen if I had to put a tag or a title on that I would call it a midnight experience I'm thoroughly convinced of Reverend Vance that the safest place in the world is in the center of God's will many of you will agree with me when I say that you will never find a place more secure than being in the center of God's will for your life but at the same time, Reverend Pete, I'm also convinced that the center of God's will, though it is the safest place, is not always the most pleasant and pain-free place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Deacon Stokes, many of us has been seduced into believing that as long as our lives are being lived out within the will of God, then everything is going to be all right. But I have discovered that is, that is not the case. In fact, what I have discovered is that God is far more concerned about making you and I to be holy than he is about making you and I happy. Sometimes it may not be an ideal situation when, um, it may not, may not be an ideal situation, but when God tells you to go, then you and I have to trust him and do what he says for us to do. And that is believing that he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Uh, let me take you to the text for a moment. Pa Paul and Silas were called by God to take the gospel into a region of Macedonia. 
But when they arrived, they were met with opposition. If you would go back and read in the 16th chapter of Acts, you'll discover that Paul had a vision at Troas. The vision involved a man from Macedonia crying, come out into Macedonia and help us. And so, so there is a connection between Paul's vision and Troas and his visit to Philippi. I guess you're saying, what you're talking about, preacher? There is a connection between his vision and his visit. No sooner than they arrived in Macedonia, there was a woman by the name of Lydia who, who was converted. The Bible says that this young girl begins to follow Paul and Silas as they made their way to the house of prayer. The Bible says that uh, she was a fortune teller. But here, she's following Paul and Silas, saying these two men are servants of the Most High God. Now, this young lady had the right message, but it was coming from the wrong source. Paul was concerned about her so much so that the Bible said that it vexed him in his spirit. So much so that one day he turns and he says to this woman, or should I say to the unclean spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And the word says that she was delivered that very hour. Now, I can tell you those who, who were profiting for her, from her saw that Paul had brought the end to their financial gain. And when they were not happy about it, so what did they do? They threw Paul and Silas in jail. They were brought before the magistrate on some trumped up charges. They were beaten and thrown into jail. And the only thing Paul and Silas was guilty of is being used by God to deliver this young lady from a demonic possession. But how many know today that whenever you get delivered some, some, from something, everybody is not going to be happy about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When the, the Lord delivers you from a bad situation, when God sets you free from an addiction, not everybody is going to share your excitement. So here they are beaten, bloodied, and broken, lying in a Philippian jail. Well, notice that the text starts with this three-letter conjunction. It says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Not 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 have a pity party they didn't sit back and scratch their head but what they did was they sang songs and they prayed now what's so special about midnight well i'm glad you asked we know that that r b writer wilson pickett said He's going to wait. Uh-huh. See, somebody know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Gladys Knight said she going she to take the midnight train to Georgia. Uh-huh. But what makes midnight so special? We know that midnight is the darkest part of the night. And it's the deepest part of the night. Because one second after midnight becomes a brand new day. One second after midnight, it's officially morning. And I think there's a correlation when we read the scripture that it says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And if you can just make it through the night, joy is right around the corner. Paul and Silas found themselves beaten, bloodied, and broken. Their situation could get any darker, but at midnight, you don't find them whining. At midnight, you don't hear them saying, whoa, it's me. Instead, Luke says that they prayed and sang songs unto God. This, may, this message should be able to relate to every one of us in here because every one of us in this building and even on live stream this morning is either in a midnight experience right now you're either on your way out of a midnight situation or you're headed into a midnight situation 
But the fact of the matter is we all will face a midnight situation. Midnight is when you find yourself in a situation that's no way, that's, that, that has no way that you have control over it. Midnight is when you find yourself caught up into something that you cannot handle it on your own. Whether it be sickness, suffering, or sorrow, whether it be troubles, trials, or tribulations, we all will have some midnight situations. So if you haven't faced midnight situations, keep on going to bed at night and keep on getting up in the morning because I can promise you sooner or later you will face a midnight situation. Mm -hmm. but, but, but for the rest of us uh, who have already faced it, going through and having our way to be facing it, I can tell you there is some good news. And the good news is that we don't have to be defeated by midnight. The midnight hour reminds us that God does his best work when we think it's too late. God has a way of blowing our mind right at the point when he feels like you are about to lose your mind. Isaiah 26 and 3 said, Thou who keep his mind stayed on him, he will keep it in perfect peace. In other words, God was showing up even at the midnight hour and Paul and Silas were very fully aware of this. And so I'm not surprised to hear that Paul and Silas were singing at midnight because of those of us who have had the face midnight knows that the first thing you do is pray. Even if you haven't prayed in a long time, you will pray when you are faced with a midnight situation. Even if you think you don't know how to pray, you'll learn how to pray when you're faced with a midnight situation. All I'm trying to say is midnight is an hour of prayer. So if it doesn't surprise me that they were praying at midnight. But what's so amazing is that not only did they pray, but he said they also said songs unto God. Now, I thought that was amazing because it's easy for us to praise God when everything is going well in our lives. It's easy for us to sing this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine when the S-U-N is, sh is shining. It's easy for us to lift up our voices and say, I know the Lord will make a way when all of your bills are paid. It's not too difficult to lift your hands and say, I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, when you have a reasonable portion of health and strength. But can you sing songs of Zion when you are going through? Can you praise him in the midnight of your storm? Can you praise him during the midnight experiences? Can I share something? Paul and Silas were not the first to be persecuted for doing the Lord's work. As a matter of fact, when I read the text, I found out that Paul and Silas were sitting in the dungeon that's on the prison floor and they were already beaten bleeding and bruised for a moment I don't even see them because I was reading in my Bible and for my Bible readers you guys can follow me you know that David was on the run and why was David on the run he was hiding in a cave that was cold and he was scared and hungry running from the very man who he would have gave his life for I see Joseph Pharaoh's and Pharaoh prison sent there by his jealous brothers but he still was able to give God some praise I see Daniel sleeping like a baby while the lions prowl all around him I see the three Hebrew boys thrown into the fiery furnace all because they did not want to eat at the king's table then imagine the confidence and the faith that Paul and Silas had back then they knew that they were not alone in the prison cell it was just a matter of time before God will step in and do what he does best uh, let me say it this way when you see somebody today that struggles through their midnight experiences and you witness firsthand how God makes a way for them when it's your turn to go through you can face your midnight hour on a newfound confidence uh, knowing that God has no respect of a person meaning if he did it for them he'll do it for you and we've got to be
be witnesses for Christ during the good times and even in our midnight situations instead of saying oh Lord what are you going to do they said I will trust the Lord until I die in other words Paul and Silas didn't panic while they were in prison but they were already seen or they at least heard about God's delivering power the Bible says that at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them it says that the prisoners were listening to them well what gave the prisoners a listening ear well Paul and Silas was on the inside just like them they had been beaten just like them they were chained and bound just like them in other words they were in the same boat as the other prisoners but at midnight but at midnight their test became their testimony the bible said that suddenly there was a great earthquake and so that the foundation of the prisoners was shaken and immediately all the doors open and everyone's chains were loosed now while I was studying this passage something profound came to my little puny mind Luke said there was a great earthquake but when I read the text it didn't sound like an earthquake to me the roof didn't cave in the walls didn't fall in the building didn't come crumbling down the Bible said that the doors just opened and every man's chains fell off but Luke said it was a great earthquake I would submit to you this morning that what made it the great earthquake was that the doors were opening what made it the great earthquake was not the chains falling off what made it the great earthquake is not the prisoners release but yet they were restrained I know y'all gonna look at me like I'm crazy the chains fell off the doors are open but they didn't leave let me make it plain for you they should have got up and ran for life that's not what they did they stayed there my question to you my question to you what do you do what do you do ah uh, yeah the doors flew open the chains fell off but nobody left the jail that's what made it a great earthquake after the earthquake the prison guard saw that the doors had flown open and assuming that everyone had escaped he drew his sword to take his own life oh help me holy ghost ah he knew the price and the penalty for losing the prisoners so instead of going through the drama he said let me take my own life but to his surprise Paul says do thyself no harm we are all here that's when the jailer realized that that was a greater power at work in that prison it was a greater power at work that kept every man in his cell the jailer cried out sirs sirs what must i do to be saved oh that was the great earthquake right there it was an earthquake that not only shook the jailhouse but it was a shaking in the jailer's house swell oh in other words god didn't shake just shake up the jailhouse 
but he shook up the jailer. And what did it take to shake up the jailer? The Bible said it took an earthquake. My question to you this morning, what will God have to do to shake up in your life in order to get your attention? Is it more sickness? Is it more pain? Is it more suffering? It took an earthquake to get this man's attention. He said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Saved from what? The earthquake was over. The tremors had stopped. The aftershock was over. Saved from what? This man was literally asking Paul and Silas, how can I be saved? How can a man like me be saved? After all, I'm a no good nothing. After all, I don't deserve it. After all, I am not worthy. After all, I used to be a drug dealer. After all, I was a harlot. After all, I was a bad mother. After all, I was a bad father. But let me give you some good news. And 2,000 years later, that's the question that many are asking today. They are saying, how can a person like me be saved? After all the wrong I've done, how can somebody like me be saved? Well, I bet you if I pass the mic around this morning, the testimony would go like this. If he can save a wretch like me, then God can save anybody. Paul was one of the greatest theologians. And the one thing I like about him, he didn't give this man a lecture. He didn't give him a dissertation on the Ten Commandments. He didn't even mention the Beatitudes. Paul simply says to this man, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and ye shall be saved. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He simply said, you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because can I tell you something? We were not saved by head first. We were saved by heart first. That's why Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, Thou shalt be saved, for with the heart I believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible said that this man, this man was saved that very hour. My question to you, is there anybody other than me that believe in God's word? Is there anybody that believe in my Jesus? Is there anybody in the building this morning and on live stream that knows anything about prayer and going down on your knees and having a little talk with my Savior? You couldn't talk to mama. You couldn't talk to daddy. You couldn't talk to your spouses. But I do know that there's somebody, there's somebody who's listening. You know somebody who has ears and can hear our prayers. Just when you were about to throw in the towel, God stepped in right on time. The songwriter said he may not come when you want him but he'll show up but he'll show up but he'll show up right on time i don't know what you're going through but i come 
should be a testimony this morning to tell you that the God I serve is a living God. The God that I serve, he answers the prayers. He brought us from a mighty long way. And when I look back, and when I look back over my life, I can truly say, I can truly say that he gave me a midnight experience. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Has he ever turned it around for you? Has he ever done anything late in the midnight hour for you? You do know that God will. You do know that God will turn it around. Can I give you my testimony? He picked me up and he turned me around. He placed my feet on a solid ground. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that through it all, he came in my midnight hour. I can sing the song. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. But when I look around, I think things over. All of my good days, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. All my good days outweigh my bad days. And I won't, and I won't, and I won't complain. Why? Because he's been good. He's been good. He's been good to me. More than this old world could ever be. He's been so good. He dried. He dried. He dried all of my tears away. And so for that, I'll just say thank you, Lord. I'll say thank you, Lord. I'll say thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't, I won't complain. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Do I serve an amazing God? I'm so glad that he comes in my midnight hour. I'm so glad that he knows just what I need. I'm so glad that he looked beyond all of my faults and still supplied all, not some, all, not a little bit, but all of my needs. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. I won't complain at your midnight hour, at your midnight hour. Don't go to sleep on a midnight hour because it only lasts for just a minute. Amen. Amen. As we all stand across the sanctuary, can we give a hand, another hand clap of praise for that word? And understand that it only lasts for a minute. But it's up to us to make the decision to follow Christ. As the jailer was offered Christ, this is our opportunity to offer Christ to you today. Now, we don't know what you're going through. We don't know what your midnight is. But this is your opportunity. That was your earthquake. That was your time to agitate your spirit for you to make the commitment to Christ. As our leaders are getting in place, is there one today who wants to say, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to follow the God that heals, delivers, and set free? What must I do to follow the God who died for my sins? Because of his sacrifice, I have the ability to have the key to eternal life but we have to accept it with our heart. So is there one today 
who's willing to accept Jesus Christ in his heart so that you can follow Christ and live in your, live in your purpose that he has for you. This is your time. Is there one? Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Come on, put our hands together for this young lady who's come to give her life to Christ. Oh. be one who's waiting you committed your life to Christ now you maybe you know Christ for the pardon of your sins and you stepped away but this is the opportunity for you to come back into the house of Zion the reason why you're here today is because we need you we need you to occupy the, occupy the space that you're supposed to in this branch of Zion and many times we won't be able to move forward until you get in the right place that's for members too so is that you today? Maybe you want to recommit your life to Christ and this is the place where you want to come back and say, Lord, I need you back in my life. I need you to cover me. I need you to heal me. I need you to deliver me from whatever I'm dealing through because I trust in you with my whole heart. I stepped away for a minute. Oh, now I'm back. And I need you in my life. Is there one today? last appeal maybe you know Jesus for the pardon of your sins but maybe you're looking for a church home now I, I recommend to you and I submit to you that Greater Gethsemane is not a perfect church but we're a church that is aspiring to, to live in our purpose our God ordained purpose in our lives this is a place where you can grow where you can learn where you can fellowship we have several opportunities for you to be a part of this is the place where you need to be to grow if that's your that's your testimony that's where you're at right now I encourage you to raise your hand or walk down the aisle. We have leaders all across the sanctuary that's willing to help you and, and walk you through this process. Is that one who wants to make greater their home? You know Jesus for your sins, but you need a place to fellowship, you need a place to belong. Because you cannot grow in your relationship and your uh, maturation in Christ unless you belong to a body of Christ. You can do all the devotion that you want, you can meditate all you want, but we need to be in relationship with one another God created us to be in relationship with one another. So if that's you doing today, make your way down the aisle. We will gladly wrap our loving arms around you and welcome you into this branch of Zion. Is there one? Amen. Can we put our hands together? Come on, let's celebrate them. It's in the room. Whatever you need. Amen. We thank you for all those say all the lives that came today. I'm going to make one more appeal as our leaders are returning to their seats. And as you return to your seat, if there's one 
that maybe you, you were hesitant, maybe you were still waiting, come on, this is an opportunity. As we're returning to our seats, come on, walk down this aisle. We're waiting for you. Is there one? Is there one who wants to be saved, who wants to recommit their life to Christ, or who wants to join this branch of Zion? Amen. We'll be, look like we have a safe house. We all belong to a branch of Zion. Amen. Amen. As you, as you take your seats before we um, prepare to worship the Lord through giving, can we give another hand clap of praise for Minister Yvonne Stephanie and that wonderful word that she brought on this morning? I'm thankful for, you, for your gifting and your anointing and you operating in your authentic self. Amen. And we are excited that, God, that we have so many associate ministers here that can bring the word of God and that pastor trusts us to, to bring forth the word of God in his absence. So let's even celebrate our pastor in his absence, first lady. Amen. As we're preparing to worship the Lord through giving one of the most important part of the services, if you are in need of an envelope, please signify by raising your hand. And one of our wonderful ushers will be there to assist you. Um, as you know, we, we are asked to bring our tithe and offering. A tithe is 10% of everything that God has given to us. An offering is anything above that and beyond. I am encourage you to continue to give your tithe and offering so we continue to support the ministry here that moves forward. Pastor also asked us to make a sacrificial um, donation of a dollar a day. So if you haven't been doing that, you can do a dollar a day. You can do it for the whole month. But we're asking you to put that under um, the uh, additional pledge and offer a sacrificial offering. But, but not only did he ask you to do a sacrificial offering for the, for the body of Christ, but he also asked you to, to match that. So if you're, if you're giving the, um, the money for each day, that you match that and you put it in your own savings account so that you can make sure not only you're pouring into the church, but you're pouring into yourself. Amen? Amen. I mean, I know we get quiet when we start talking about money, but that's all right. It's, all, it's okay. We got to have the conversation. Amen. So as you all know, we can give through several ways. We can give through um, Giveify, the church website. We can give through Cash App. Um, and you can give in person. If you're online and you're worshiping with us, please feel free to worship the Lord through giving through those several different le le electronic outlets. We thank you for all that continues to go on in the life of our church. Um, you've heard the announcements um, already, but as you all um, know, next Sunday is Women's Day. It's also baptism and communion. Um, so we have a lot of things going on. So we ask that you continue to support that. Um, I know we have about eight. We have about 18 candidates to be baptized. Can we celebrate the? Come on, I think that deserves a better hand clap of praise. We have 18 people who are willing to come and commit their life to Christ and be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that is a feat to behold. Now, we are excited about that. We're going to celebrate communion. Our women, um, they have private rehearsal on this Thursday, I believe. Amen. So if you would like to participate in that, you can um, do that. We have Bible study, Tuesday noon Bible study, Wednesday Bible study um, at, going on this week. And we hope to see everyone here again next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Make sure you invite somebody as well. Uh, let's make sure we pack out this place for our Women's Day for baptism and communion. Amen. Dig it. Um, dig it. Uh, lead it in training. About to call him Deacon. It'll be Deacon soon, but lead in training. Amen. Lead in training. Uh, Quentin Myers will be holding a basket for us. So, can we all stand across the sanctuary as we prepare to worship the Lord through giving? I'm going to pray. Most wise and heavenly Father, we thank you for what we're about to pour back into your kingdom, Lord God. We thank you for the gift. Lord God, bless those who can give, bless those who can't. Lord God, let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll be followed by the direct, uh, direction of our ushers, and then we'll give the benediction following that.
Let us stand all across the sanctuary as we prepare for the, to leave the presence, leave this place, but never the presence of the Lord. Most wise and heavenly Father, we thank you for the offering that was given unto your kingdom, Lord God. Now we ask that you bless it and keep it, Lord God. Let your face shine upon us as we move throughout the this way and move throughout the rest of the week. Let your presence be a, a be a let your presence fall and let it be ever present as we go through our homes, our jobs, wherever we go throughout the week. Let, let that word help us to move us forward and understand that midnight will not last all night, but it just lasts one minute. And as we can last that one minute, we can make it into the next part of our destiny, our plan, and our purpose for our life. We thank you and we bless you. And as the people of God say, amen, amen, amen. Please make sure you come and greet the preacher. Please make sure you come and greet the preacher and let her know that she's done a wonderful job. Thank you.